All right, all right, all right. What's good, Scooter Heads? This is your boy Jay on the Segway. As you guys can see, today we got the Nambi Bernie. Now, this video is part three out of, you know, one to three videos. I'm good. This is more for you guys who's actually trying to buy one or thinking about buying one because I see on Facebook, for example, just on Facebook alone, a lot of guys are asking questions about, hey, I want to order it. Uh, what do you guys think of it? What should I do with it? Is there anything I can expect? I see a lot of people having problems with them. So I'm going to be that guy that's going to address a lot of those issues. I can't address all of them because sometimes you find new ones every day, but I'm going to go over the more common ones that you guys are probably going to experience. So we're going to go over first the expectations of the scooter when you get it in the mail. If you buy one of these from your retailer, you may not have issues with it because usually if these things ship to a retailer, they're gonna sort out all the issues. When they assemble it, they're gonna see that the brakes are rubbing or it's warped. They're gonna see that the controller is bad and they're gonna fix all these things if they get to sell it before, you know, if they get to deal with it before someone comes in and wants to buy it, which will be you. So I'm gonna go over those things that I dealt with when I had got the scooter and other things that I've seen people deal with, the common things more of. We're gonna go over the good things about owning the scooter because there are good things about owning the scooter. A lot of people seem to have to go through some things before they have the perfect NAMI. I'm going to go, I'm just going to talk to you guys about the goods and then we're going to go over accessories, things that'll make your life owning this scooter a little easier. Um, that's going to all be relative because you may not want certain things that I may want. Like some people may not want this pouch here because it's like, oh, it's too bulky. Same thing for the, uh, the, the upper kitty bar. But anyways, we'll get into all of that. So um, if you think you're going to like the video, hit the like button. All right. And subscribe if you think you like what you saw towards the end of the video. Um, Go on and support the channel if you want. I got a couple of homies, you know what I'm saying? A couple of loyal loyal guys that like messing with my videos. I really appreciate you guys. And even you new guys watching the video, I appreciate it. So um, let's get into it. Hit the Some of the out of box issues, we're gonna start off with that front rotor. That is not the original front rotor, but the original front rotor was bent. So that's something you can expect when you get this thing out of the box. That thing's gonna wobble and make noise, as well as your rear mud guard. I had to flop them. So you see the one to the left? I had put that one to the one on the right. It was flipped the other way around when I first got it. Thus far, it was rubbing the tire, making a noise when I was going ahead spinning the wheels. The next issue I was having was over with this with this uh, folding mechanism. So if you open up the folding mechanism, like you see here in the pit in the video, I'm gonna lift it up, and you get the steering folded down, nice and easy. Now we want you want the steering to go all the way to the bottom. Now look at the mechanism here. You see the part in my hand? That is the folding latch, right where my finger is. It goes inside of there. Now. This latch right here can twist, right? With my hands is full, while I'm holding it with my hands on the left side, you got to be careful when handling the scooter. So when you're taking it out, make sure you're handling the scooter in a manner where that thing will not twist on you. The steering wheel needs to be straight as possible. The two screws that you see on the top and the two nuts on the back, you wanna take those out if it does bend. Once you take those out, it will allow you to get to that actual latch that's in my hand that I'm showing you guys. It sits inside the stem just like that. And then you can try to straighten it if you want to. You may not get it straight, but that's covered under warranty. Now here you got the, the the display. This is to show you guys that you will have some miles on your NAMI, so that is expected. Now these disconnected cables here on the left and right side of your NAMI scooter, you wanna disconnect those to release the speed limiter. No matter what you do with the display, if you do not disconnect those cables, your scooter will be restricted. And there's another look of them. You're gonna see one on the left side and the right side if you were standing on your actual scooter. Oh yeah, and you're gonna expect to add and remove air from your tires. They may, they may be over or under inflated. Just check your tire pressures. There is a very good chance you're gonna to have to bleed the brakes. So right where you see the bolt in the middle by the handles, and then you go down to the bottom if you're doing the front brakes and that little bolt right there, that's where you're gonna insert the, the, the mineral oil to bleed your brakes. So what about the good things? Well, got a couple of good things about owning this scooter. One, 
you get 50% off lifetime off of every OEM part that this scooter has available to it when it's for sale. Not every part that it doesn't come with, which usually isn't any OEM part. If you go on the Fluid website, Fluid uh, Freeride website, or whatever retailer you bought your NAMI scooter from, you go to their website, you usually go to an area where it talks about warranty. And I'll show you guys on the computer how I do it with the Fluid Freeride uh, website. So you guys that's in France and Spain, uh, Africa, any other country or continent around the world, you guys go on ahead and um, do it the way you need to do it so that it works for you. you just watch how I navigate to the Fluid Freeride uh, through the Fluid Freeride website and then do it on your website, you know? Just kind of navigate your way through it. But that's one of the good things about owning this scooter is you get 50% off all OEM parts. Number two good things about owning this scooter is the retailer that you guys get your scooter from they'll be able to replace a lot of those parts like we talked about the front rotor being bent well you know during shipment I would, that was replaced the warranty uh the front brakes needed to be bled that was uh they sent me a brake bleeding kit as well that was through the warranty you don't pay for that stuff you don't pay for the shipping you don't pay for any of it they're just going to tell you to send them some pictures maybe a small video that you will have to upload to your uh, youtube channel and then just send them the link to that uh, video and then they'll go on ahead and review it and get you parts sent immediately same thing with the, the the stem that part that i told you guys i showed you that bends if you're not careful like i said when you take this thing out of the box you gotta be very careful with it because if you're not if you turn this steering too much two ways uh, you can bend that piece and it won't allow you to screw this thing shut. So you got to be careful about that. And uh, but however, if that is bent during the process, you go on ahead and make a claim through your retailer that you bought the scooter from and they'll be able to get you a new part sent or or and or you can try to bend that back as much as you can. If it's far, if it's bent too far, you may not get to bend it back properly. I don't know. I had an issue with bending mine. So I went on ahead and made the claim. And in two weeks, I got my new part put it inside the NAMI. Now I got the extra one there. Um, and if you go to the Facebook group, this is the this is the part that I told you guys, if you guys don't do social media, I don't know what to tell you, player, but if you do do social media slash Facebook, if you go to the NAMI Burn E website, like I said, it's gonna be the only NAMI page that has the most members in it. Um, people are speaking all different languages, but of course, Facebook can translate it for you. However, if you go to the original NAMI website on Facebook, on, or should I say the page, Michael Shaw, S-H-A Shaw. Uh, he's the actual CEO for NAMI. He created the scooter. He built the scooter. And of course, with some help of other people, you know, like people do welding and stuff like that. But anyways, he is the actual owner of the NAMI company. He is on that page. He is also hard to get to. So if you need something that your retailer could, I repeat this, go to your retailer first. Talk to your retailer. If you're having absolutely no luck and be reasonable now, you hit Michael Shaw up because Michael Shaw is gonna be hard to get a hold of, all right? You can message him on Facebook, but as you can imagine, you've got a thousand plus members on your Facebook group. You're probably gonna be hard to get you know, a hold of. You're gonna to have to somehow get his attention so that he can pay attention to you. Plus, he's he is making new scooters, new models. He's working on them, so he's really, really busy when he's you know working, chances are. But um, you can actually talk to the owner himself so that's another good of, you know, this whole brand of NAMI scooters. And I think it's good overall. But like I said, you're going to have to get through the kinks first. All right. But um, let's get into the next subject. Accessories, things that I bought. OK, you don't have to buy these. But these things are things that I bought from my previous scooters that I felt like I needed to buy with this guy to make my life a little easier. So let's go over that. This is the phone holder I currently have on my NAMI. I wouldn't buy this again. I bought this at Walmart. So uh be advised don't get this one but i want to show you guys the clearances from this angle i will put in the description below the actual phone holder that i use you got pretty useful items here like this display protector which is going to be the silicone black cover that i have over my nami display display this is going to be in the description below this is for garmin edge 830 just so you guys know it fits the nami display perfectly as i go around you can see here fits it like a glove and it still allows you access to your USB slash phone charger. And here you got the actual phone display, like the screen display. That is for a phone. I have the link for that in the description below. And here you got 
the, the 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 carrying bag this is a ninja nine ninja brand but i prefer the wild man case that's a three liter size then you got the gemini lights this is a gemini titan 4000 it has a little display to tell you how many hours or minutes you have left you know depending on the the brightness setting that you are currently using it's kind of like my little light bar this one shoots a very roundish light in front of you very powerful i use this on trail systems then you have the actual remote that comes for it you can't see it very well here in this picture but um it has the high beam and then you can uh flash your lights and you can just turn the lights on and off and then you got outbound lighting that is a trail evo model you can see from the very beginning of when i showed this bite here you can see that it has airflow so it's actually have a pretty little bit of technology built into it it has transistors and little computers inside to keep the bolts from burning out so this is a very good powerful light that i like to use here's the carbon revo upper kitty bar i use that to mount my gemini as you guys can see titan 4000 light uh, i like these carbon revo um light bars they're very good this actually fits the nami so if you went on the carbon revo website or on mini motors you can purchase this item it'll be in the link just below here we got a dirt bike uh, stand. So this thing, you know, it'll go up another six inches, maybe not even that, maybe about five inches higher. There are better options. I will leave a link to the better options down in the description below. So check that out. Next kit on the block is gonna be Armadillas slash uh, tire sealant. All right, you wanna put this in your tires, you wanna follow the instructions. Now I got this specific bottle, you could probably get it online, but in the link in the description below i'm going to put links to the armadillas because that's very tried tested and true this is as well for me i got this from a local specialized bicycle shop uh you go in their shops and so if you guys have a really good shop and i'm not talking about walmart i'm talking about like an actual bicycle recreation bicycle shop go in their shop and ask them hey you guys have any really good tire sealant you recommend and uh, this is what I was recommended. I put this in my Dualtron Victor and I haven't had a freaking leak since. And that could be a combination of things, but I will say go to your local bicycle shop if you guys do not want to wait for this to come in the mail or any type of armadillas, tire slime, whatever you want to call it. If you don't want to wait for it to come in the mail, go to your local bicycle shop and uh, get some tire sealant. It's good stuff. The next two items I'm gonna mention are, uh, it's gonna make your life a little easier. So you want to get these guys. It's gonna be a hex kit, metric type, with the ball bottoms, all right? These are fire, all right, fire. Um, they make everything easier when it comes to getting to hard to reach places or places where you have to get in at an angle. The ball bottoms make that easier to, 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 to reach and it makes screwing them back together a lot quicker, you know? Another thing I'm gonna highly recommend is this uh, ultra tough, ultra steel, little, what is this, like a precision screwdriver bit set. Inside of here, you're gonna get your screwdriver, right? You're also gonna get a heap of different atta different attachments you got torques keys these things come in handy dealing with the brakes the brakes on these scooters have uh torx keys or torque bolts instead of uh allen keys so you definitely something like this will help you actually on the smaller things on the scooter and even around the household so if you do not have one of these i'll show you again definitely look for this online oh and you're welcome the next one, I do not have an actual, I don't have it here with me. Like I, I just don't have it. So I'm just gonna show it to you on right now. You see that exact number is APU 13? Look for that. That's gonna allow you to adjust the actual springs on your NAMI. You guys wanna know where that is? Let me show you. When it comes to doing it on the front, you're gonna turn the wheel the best thing to do is to lay this thing down, turn the wheel, and boom, you got access to it right there. Same thing for the rear. You're going to have to lay the scooter down, and you'll get access to it right there on the very bottom. Bottom of the spring, that's where you're going to go on ahead and uh, hook that C-clamp into and turn it in the direction you need to turn it so that you can get the adjustments that you need to get. That's probably going to be the best, and I mean the best upgrade that you can do to your nami scooter i adjust the dampening which is the little red knob on the suspension i did the dampening you know adjustment now real quick while i got the scooter here these scooters from what i know what i assume are adjusted for an 165 to 175 pound rider 
If you weigh anything more than that, if you weigh less than that, you could probably actually leave it the way it's set at from the factory and you'll be good. The front shock on my NAMI was at the softest setting from the shit, from the spring all the way to the dampening. It was just soft, okay? I personally like to have my front a little stiffer than the rear because the front has to has to be lifted over sidewalks. It has to be picked up. If I'm riding and I see a little small hole, I have to be able to get that front end. And if it's got too much softness, when you pull it up, it's gonna it's, the, the suspension is gonna stretch and it won't lift the wheel up like you need it to. That front shock was set all the way to the surface and the rear was a little bit less. Oh, damn microphone, just trying to go everywhere. And the rear was set a little bit less soft than the front, but the front spring was maxed out on softness. So I just, it was a very plush, plush ride and it's just, that's just too plush. Guys, according to the type of terrain you guys ride and according to your weight, adjust those things accordingly and I promise you that's going to be one of the best OEM modifications that you can do to this scooter is adjusting that suspension to your weight and to your riding style. All right. So get that done. Get that APU 13. I think it's APU 13, but yeah, it's right there. Get that guy. All right. The next guy is in this pouch. I talk about this guy in almost all my videos when I start talking about things you need to buy for your scooter because this dude right here, the Xiaomi air pump, electric air pump, has a USB mini charge port on the bottom. Booyah, right there, you feel me? A little closer, a little, you see that? Did it zoom in? I don't know, maybe. But you got that, that's where you charge it at. And it comes with this soft pouch. It's all suede and everything, Alcaterra, however you want to call it. It's got a little mini kangaroo pouch in here, right? So what you do is you open the pouch up and inside of here, you're going to find a, a USB mini charging cable. You're going to find your adapter for the French valve. So if you guys have a French valve bicycle or whatever, uh, this will allow you to, to screw on your air pump to that valve so you can fill whatever device is up. You know, you can fill that device or item up with some air using this pump. And it's also gonna come with your ball. I like to call this the ball um, attachment. If you have a football, basketball, uh, soccer ball, comes with this thing right here. So you can fill those up as well. So this is a very good multi-purpose, multi-use air pump. I actually take this with me on my motorcycle trips in case I need to fill it up with some air. It will take a lot longer to do bigger vehicles like that, you know, like motorcycle or your car, but it can fill up a car tire. It'll probably use your entire battery life if it's full to do a car tire. But, you know, with these, I can get maybe, I mean, I can get a lot of actually, you know, cause you're just adding a little bit of air from time to time, depending on the temperatures and stuff like that. But anyway, the Xiaomi air pump, it's all electric. Okay, if you guys Europe, live in Europe and you use bar, it's got bar, it's got a PSI bar for the bicycles. It can slow down the rate. You got the car so it can really boost up how fast it pumps the air, you know, and um, and basketball. That way, you know, when you see these little icons on the, on the, on the left side, bicycle, um, motorcycle, car, and basketball. Those settings are there because that's like I said, it's going to depend on how, you know what, we're just going to put this, it's going to depend on how fast, you know, like how fast the air is going to push out of here. It'll, it'll regulate it that way. You don't use as much battery, but if you're trying to pump up a basketball, make sure you have the basketball and you can go from PSI to bar. So that's the cool thing about it. Uh, up and down is, you know, you can set your PSI. I usually use PSI. And speaking of PSI, 45 to 48 PSI is ideal for this scooter in particular. Uh, most Dualtron scooters are like 50 PSI, depending on if it's tubed or, in it, or not, in a tubed or not. Um, but yeah, that's what you do. To turn it on, all you got to do is you plug it in to turn it off, pull it out to turn it in. I mean, pull it out to turn it on and push it in to turn it off. Uh, this also has a flashlight option. So on this little bottom button down here, you, is it the bottom button? No, it's this one. This button right here on the left turns your flashlight on and off. So if you're actually doing operations at night, you don't want to put your cell phone out to see where you're going to screw the step, you know, the little stem thing here, you know, at. Then you turn the flashlight on and you're good to go. So Xiaomi Air Pump, get yours. All right, these wheel sliders, they're optional. Now, if you take a good look at wheel sliders, I like to use them because they have taken damage in the past instead of passing on damage from an accident to the actual scooter. You can see 
they are wider than any part of the scooter that they are wider than they will protect in an accident chances are to get your wheels on and off and i'm talking about the entire wheels on the nami to get them on and off i i had this tool for so many years I don't even remember when I got it. So don't expect to find this specific tool. All this is is a socket with its own little handle so you don't have to have any attachments to do some screw work. This is a 13, 13 over 16 size socket. Get that size socket for your NAMI. That way you can take your wheels off. Um, I know this is a, a, a this is not an American scooter, but this size fits those nuts perfect. There's absolutely no wiggle in there. It just it slides right in perfectly. So 13 over 16 socket, and then you can get whatever um, handle you want to get, whatever ratchet size. If you want it to be a quarter inch or a half inch, I recommend half inch usually for like you know axle bolts, but um. You can get a quarter inch ratchet to hook up to your actual socket and make sure you get the socket the, you know, the same size so that you can actually connect them together. Otherwise, you're gonna need some adapters. And uh, that's just so you can change your tires, change your rims, because I'm waiting on my rims to come in for this scooter so I can go on and change them out because they got bent riding up, uh, trying to ride this like a Victor. But anyways, go on ahead and get you that. That is a very important tool. I could not stress that enough. You guys definitely want to have that so you can get your wheels off for whatever reason. If you need to change your brake rotors, right? You need to take the wheel off. Can't do it with the wheel on. 13 over 16, right? Yeah, 13 over 16 wrench uh, socket. That's what you guys want to get. Um, another one thing I almost forgot. You guys may need to bleed the brakes. Likely the front brake, especially if it's bent when you get it. Um, make sure you get a brake bleeding kit, okay? Because, you, you know, if your front rotors is bent, you're probably gonna end up having to bleed your brakes. That seems to be typical. May not happen with you, but it's very typical. All right, your brake, your brake bleeding kit are typically, typically gonna come with syringes like this. I got two syringes um, and some mineral oil. I, they got clamps that you're supposed to put between your brake pads. That way the, uh, the cylinders don't compress while you're doing your business with the brake bleeding. Uh, and they usually come with Torx screws. So you don't have to, if you don't have your own, you can just use the one in the kit. And there's a whole procedure to doing this that I do not have the video of. And um, I've been trying to shoot this video to do that, but I, I need somebody to, to, to hold the camera so you guys can see me actually do it. So I can't put that video out until I can find somebody, I get one of my homies to, um, to hold a camera while I show you guys how I bled my brakes. Because I promise you guys, if your front rotor's bent, you're probably gonna need to bleed your brakes, your front brakes. Now, your rear one's probably gonna be strong. Mine's was very strong, but anyways, a brake bleeding kit. I'm gonna put the link in the description below so you guys know which one I use. This one works perfectly. You just have to do it right. Fluid free rides, like I told you guys earlier in the video, they would send you a brake bleeding kit, but I used absolutely nothing from it. The, 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 the blocks that go between your, your rotors, they didn't even go between the, the pads. I, get the one that I got online. It's all the same. It's even better. It comes with better components. It's a lot easier to use. And um, you'll figure out which ones to put, We're, we won't get into that right now because this is like kind of messy right now. <laughs> There's a few more things, okay, that I do not have with me, AKA Magura MT7s or MT5E as an electronic, as an echo, you know, like EE. Um, Magura makes, I think Magura makes an MT7E also break. The E is just so that it comes already with like some kind of electric, um, cable so that like an actuator cable so that your brake lights can turn on it's like all connected to each other so that when you hit the brakes with those upgraded brakes that you buy from Agura's um the brake light will actually come on I think that's what it's supposed to be for so um I may upgrade because these brakes they're very good but people are buying those Magura 5s and 7s for a reason so I'm probably going to try it out eventually just not right now but the brake upgrade and the PMTs is P as in Papa Michael Tango PMT brakes. I mean, uh, tires I said brakes PMT tires. Okay. hundred by 55, 6.5. I'll put it, I'll put it, it's right up there. That size. That's a for sure going to fit your scooter size. You can play around and go with the 95s, 55, 90s or the 90, 95, 50. I don't know if you want to go 50s on a, on the sidewall, but 
it can't be bigger than 55 because you're gonna rub up on the body of a scooter. So 95, 55, you know, it's gonna be a little bit of a smaller tire, which might give you more acceleration, especially with the added grip that the PMT tires actually give you versus these stock ones. They're like a nylon something hybrid material. They're a little more slippery, but they last a long time. That's the difference. And they're a lot more durable. You know, they won't, you won't get a, a tire puncture as easy as you would with the PMT tires from what I've been seeing, what I've heard. So uh, PMT tires are very good performing tires. They're good for the rain, they're good for the dry. They have a lot more grip, a lot more lean grip from what I've heard. And uh, you'll probably get a little more acceleration right where these tires would actually spin. Those tires probably grip. Like, you know, you may get a little slip and that's just micro stuff. Who's racing these things? Well, maybe some people are racing them, but I'm not racing it. I'm just riding slow, occasionally go fast. These tires for me are perfect, but when these tires do wear out, I think I'm gonna try the PMT tires. Yeah, I'm probably gonna try them out. So one last thing. Uh, brake rotor adjusters, adjusters. There's a tool, I'll put it in the link below. I don't know what it looks like, I've never seen it, but I've seen people talk about it before. Um, it basically straightens out your, uh, your brake rotors. So if you have really cool brake rotors that you really like and you don't wanna get rid of them, get the brake rotor adjustment tool and th that tool should be able to straighten out your rotors so you don't have that problem. Also with this NAMI here, what I was telling you guys about putting air in this thing, these tire valves on the scooter, they stick out a lot. Like a little baby penis. Let's just be for real here, okay? Those things are actually, the, when you go higher speeds, like when you go fast, maybe like 30 miles an hour or faster, you may, I think most people get some kind of a slight vibration. And usually like, it's, a, it's annoying as hell. I have that on my rear tire and I have a freaking bump, like a hit right where the stem is. So I got this nasty unbalanced movement going on in my rear tire where even the freaking rotor kind of slightly slaps the, the brake pads. It's just annoying. Like I told you guys, I'm waiting for my new uh, rims to come in. They're fragile. That or maybe it's a combination of the scooter being very heavy. And, you know, if you're going a certain speed, you hit a pothole, you hit those little reflective things that stick out of the roadway, you know, that, uh, the, 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 you know, that divides lanes and splits lanes and shows you the shoulder lines. Uh, you run over those fast enough and you're going to bend your rim if the tire don't have enough pressure in it. That's why I told you guys 45 to 48 PSI is ideal. You may need to go a little lower. You may need to go a little higher, depending on the type of riding you're doing and depending on how much you weigh. But um, you may have to use wheel like motorcycle weights on your wheel and wherever your um, air stem is you'll put it on a complete opposite side and maybe move it just a little bit put it on a stand like this hit the throttle see if it vibrates and keep making those adjustments until you get it so that your scooter doesn't vibrate because that vibrates translates to your wheels touching or, i mean your brakes touching the um the pads touching the rotors so um I think that's all I got, man. That's all I got. I try to make this video as short as possible. Uh, if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. Go on and hit the like button. Comment below um, things that you have that made your life easier with this scooter if you already own one. Um, if you have any questions on this scooter, please ask me because I'm a little technical freak. I love little, I like tinkering with things and um, being real technical with stuff. So um, yeah, just hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know um, what questions you have about this scooter. Uh, Everybody told me before I bought this NAMI that, yeah, you're paying a lot of money for this thing, but um, once you get past the kinks, and there are kinks, you'll start to like it. I'm still getting there. All right, Jay on the Segway. See you guys on the next video. Peace. Okay, peoples. Before I let you go, guys, um, I was editing this video, right? And I went to Fluid Free Ride's website. <sighs> There's a Nami Bernie part two. There's a second version out right now. Technically, this is the third version because the original first version had 35 amp hour setup with the same battery pack. It was at 18 something cells. <sighs> So there's, a, there's like a third iteration, but NAMI on Fluid Free website, Fluid Free Rides website, they're saying this is a NAMI Bernie 2. Okay, so what's the difference is because the range is still 90 miles projected. I'm yet to do a range test on that, but I promise you guys when it gets warm enough so I can do a fair range test as far as like nice weather goes, uh, I'm going to let you guys know if that's true or not. 
but they're supposed to be a 90 mile projected range. It's still 103 pounds. It's still supposed to go 60 miles an hour, which you'll probably never see unless you weigh like 120 pounds soaking wet and you're going down the hill. Uh, but everything seems the same spec wise, 11 inch tubeless tires, uh, you know, it comes with the headlight, but here's the differences on the website. It's just a few of them. Okay. You got four piston hydraulic brakes. Those might be Logan brakes. I don't know. There's no pictures on the website showing the new version of it, but it says four piston hydraulic brakes. You're going to have added waterproof motor connectors, you know, for, for better serviceability. So I'm assuming like where the motor connectors are is probably going to be, I don't know, maybe something a little more durable, I guess, from what the one that I just showed you guys and Nami, I just showed you. It says improved charging ports. It's going to come with one five amp charging uh, like charger, just a five amp charger. So I'm assuming with the improved connectors, you can comfortably put two of those five amp chargers or a, a, a fast charger that can charge up at least up to 10 amps you know I probably wouldn't want to charge 10 amps at you know at a 10 amp rate unless like it was cold outside so the, the, the cells weren't like hot it gets risky just to me charging that fast but you get a one 5 amp charger with the NAMI now with the new one that's coming out instead of the two 2.6ers that you get like the one that I just bought not too long ago um, what else it says improved turn signals look I want to see this. I, I haven't seen any pictures. So Michael Shaw, if you're watching this video, like, dude, let me get a link. Put a link in the comments below or something like that. Showing me the pictures of this uh, this NAMI with the improved turn signals. And is it something we can integrate into our regular Bernies? All the guys who have the, the first and technically second generation NAMI Bernies. Could we use these? Is this something that we can integrate into our scooters? Because I definitely, I need that in my life. That'll be perfect if it's integratable, where I could just automatically put it on my NAMI that I have right now. And then you get a wider 27 inch handlebar. Now real quick, how wide is the stock handlebar? Let me show you. You see that about, yeah, it looks like it's about 24. God damn it. Anyways, we're at 24 inches on the stock current nami bernie uh the nami bernie handlebars so um okay that's it all right i'll see you guys later uh we're gonna look into that michael shaw if you're actually seeing this video maybe you are maybe you're not come on i need to see pictures of the new one